I'm here with Apostle Tim Sheets, and it is always a joy to talk with him because God has really given him such a heart for our nation in terms of revival, awakening. But I believe what God's doing right now, even in America, is going to have a real ripple effect. God is the God of nations. And I believe what we are seeing tastes of, what the Spirit of God is doing, is going to only be exported across the earth. And we're going to hear of great activity of God. So, uh, Apostle Tim, we do have this book coming out, and as we are doing this broadcast, I believe it's going to be released in January. You're going to have it at your prophetic summit, Come Home, which to me is a really a first book of its kind, Calling Prodigals Home. Uh, how often when you go travel and minister do you hear people talking about um, prodigal children or prodigal family members? Everywhere I go, Larry, mm. and great to be on with you, by the way. But everywhere I go, um, people are burdened for their children, their grandchildren, friends. And of course, you can't take a look at the nation honestly and not see millions of prodigal sons and daughters on our college campuses everywhere. They haven't, they ha haven't fulfilled their destiny or even entered into their destiny yet. And it's all before them. And God's going to quicken yeah. a great um, revival. And he's going to reach into their hearts. And he's going to transform prodigals. Uh, millions and millions of prayers have gone up for prodigals. And uh, I believe that we're now in that season that God's going to start answering them. They're angels that are assigned to them are already, I believe even the, these last couple of years have been connecting them to moments, hmm. to people, to situations that are beginning to, to speak into their, their lives uh, and drawing them to a change. And they're feeling the call to come home. And it's, it's supernatural, but revival is. Yeah. It's supernatural. And uh, the hunger that the, the, the generation of prodigals is, is palpable. They, they've feasted on everything and it's empty. Yeah. There's nothing there and they know it. And they're thinking, like the prodigal, it was better at father's house. Hmm. Maybe I, I need to take a look at that. And so the book is coming out and it will help people that are concerned and praying for their prodigal friend or neighbor or son or daughter, it'll give them ways to pray and decree and believe for a season to change on those prodigals. So I'm excited. And Rachel, my daughter, of course, we teamed up on this one oh, yeah. and she's such a great writer. And uh, I believe it's going to be a help to a lot of people. Well, and as we shift right now into talking about, you know, what do we sense the Holy Spirit saying and doing as we go into 2024? I, I've got to pause on one thing that you said, because I felt a real grace on it. Is there's so many people watching now when we talk about praying for prodigal, particularly uh, prodigal children. They're thinking, yes, that's where I am, Larry and Tim. But you don't understand. I have prayed and things look like they've gotten worse. <laughs> as you said something, though, I felt there was something prophetic on it in that. Mom, dad, whoever's praying, and I'm going to let you, I, I want you to speak into this, Tim, but uh -huh. I just want to say, mom, dad, whoever's praying right now, I feel like your prayers are actually accomplishing something. Specifically, angels are being released. I, I, I believe, Tim, even some of these seemingly hard, challenging, sinful cases where we're looking at our sons and daughters, and they are very far from father's house. I believe there are angels being dispatched and deployed, might even be with them right now. What, what do you sense on that? Well, we know from the time they were born, uh, there were two angels assigned to their lives. That's what Jesus said. Their angels, speaking of little ones, are mm. uh, they're, they're always in my Father's presence. They can come and go. And when that mom or that dad or grandparent even at the time that child was born, often you will you will hear moms talk about even while they're holding that child, they're praying over it. Yeah. They're making decrees over that child. Lord, this is your child. I want their destiny, uh, you know, to come forth from you. And and they pray about those kind of things, especially when that child is an infant. Well, their angels 
that attend to them and assigned by the Lord hear those things and they can hearken to, mm -hmm. to those prophetic decrees, prayers, not to mention that the Father himself has a destiny plan before they were ever born. And so this is a time when I believe those prophetic words are coming to pass. You know, revival it seems to have momentum or heights to it. it sometimes it starts out uh, like a small wave, but it keeps building. Well, revival has been building yeah. these last three or four years, especially. And there comes a point when prophetic words reach a moment or a tipping point moment, or in other words, it comes into a season. It's like wheat season or corn comes to a season, you know, it's harvest season. I'm feeling this is uh, on the prodigals right now. Yeah. Prodigals are coming into season mm. and the angels are ministering that. And the prophetic words that moms and dads uh, have spoken uh, are coming to pass. So I would encourage those of you that have made those decrees and maybe have for 20, 30 years, just keep saying them yeah. and speak now to them. Now this word is coming to pass. Now this goes to something that, that I'm hearing for our times right now, Larry. Yeah. Um, and I believe this is the season for it. You remember, um, Jesus made a statement in his earthly ministry. He, he had come to his hometown of, of Nazareth, and he goes to the temple, which is, was his, uh, his practice on the Sabbath day, and he found, or they gave him the scroll, and he found the prophet Isaiah's statement, Isaiah 61, and he reads the scroll that gives this prophetic word. And he read this part, it's in Luke chapter 4, verse, verse uh, 18. But he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce the pardon to the prisoner, recovering of sight to the blind, and to see the burdened and the battered uh, set free, and to announce the acceptable year of the Lord. The... Message Bible reads this way, and I've been pondering this for, for several days now for 2024, because the Message Bible reads not just that to preach or declare the acceptable year of the Lord, it translates it, this is God's year to act. And I believe that we are going to see God act, God's acts this year. Supernatural God acts are coming. And I believe one of those is the prodigals coming home. I believe that's why the book is coming out now. And I believe it's why the faith of uh, those that are making decrees and prayers for prodigals for years are coming to its moment. It's God's year to act on promises. And I believe one of the big ones is prodigal. So I see 2024 as a time when multiple thousands, maybe more than that, prodigals come home. The revival, a part of the revival is about the prodigals coming home. But he also, remember Jesus at that time when he read that in in Isaiah 60 or 61 from there in Luke chapter 4. But he said, uh, today you've heard this come to pass in your midst. In other words, this has come to pass right now, what I've just said. And again, the Message Bible reads in a way that I'm hearing, and I believe it is a prophetic declaration for 2024. But he sat down handed the scroll back, having read um, the prophetic word. But he said, this day you have just heard Scripture make history. 2024, I believe, is a year when Scripture 
is going to make history. We have been declaring prophetic words for the last 10 years like I have never seen. Declarations, faith decrees. We have declared promises by the multiplied millions. Uh, the, the, the true ecclesia has picked this up and we have made decrees up until 10 years or so ago. We don't really know what decrees really were, but we do now. And of course, the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 55 he, he says that prophetic words have assignments in them. And I believe that all of these prophetic words that we've been hearing and hearing and hearing and the prophetic decrees by the millions, I believe this year those scriptures are going to start making history. Prophetic words in 2024, they're going to make history. God is going to act. Promises we have declared and declared and declared are going, uh, are going to make history. And one of the biggest ones in, in Scripture that I am seeing, and I've been declaring this one for years, is Joel chapter 2, prophetic word that Joel gives for the revival at the end of the age, Jude uh, uh, Joel chapter 2 and uh, verse 25 makes a statement. And of course, in verse 28, he says, you know, I'm going to pour my spirit out on your sons and your daughters, on all flesh. And before that, he said that uh, the years, the locust, the palmer worm, the canker worm have eaten away, are going to be restored. I believe this prophetic word is a part of 2024, and I believe it's going, it's going to make history because it's going to be a God act of revival. I don't know how many, of course, the, the years, the locust, the palm worm, canker worm, that's referring to grub worms that ate harvests. I don't know how many harvests we have had uh, destroyed or eaten, uh, but it's been a lot. But this year, I believe Joel's revival is going to begin to roll. And lost harvests are going to be restored. And this is going to be a God act. It's going to change history. and. A part of that is prodigals are coming home in historic numbers. And these prodigals are going to assist in this revival, taking the word of God, the gospel of the kingdom, and they are going to do it with passion. I believe that is off the charts. Uh, different level of passion, different level of ability to communicate. I mean, this these prodigals are communicators. They get the word out. They can do it very quick. They can call a meeting to, tonight. Uh, you know, it's... So I'm seeing historic revival. I'm seeing God acts that are going to change history. And I believe 2024 is about that. It will also occur in the natural realms as well. I believe we're going to see historic change in government, uh, in nations. But, you know, I'm, of course, I, I'm, a, I'm a part of the ecclesia, and so we're, we're going to believe for turnaround in our nations but we are going to see the promises of God that he has made for the harvest that he has desired. And many say it's a billion soul harvest, Larry. I believe a historic harvest is going to begin to rise. You're going to hear testimonies of it. It's going to be phenomenal. And I'll keep using the word that the Message Bible used. I believe it's going to be historic. So that's what I'm seeing. 
Well, and I, I love that because one of the things that I think of, even going back to prodigals, is for the parents who are praying for your children, it's bigger. And it's obviously very significant that you want your child to come home. But oh, sure. But I really do believe these prodigals coming home are going to really catalyze this great revival awakening. You're right. It's been building about three or four years. I, I, I mean, you and I have seen different mm-hmm. aspects of it materializing, whether it was the beaches in California, watching sure. with Jesse and Parker Green, or a lot of these young people. Isn't it interesting? We're talking about prodigals. A lot of the prodigals are these young people. When mm-hmm. they get saved and on fire, like you said, they mm-hmm. will be compelling communicators. And I prophesy they will take even things like TikTok and all mm-hmm. of the social media advantages. Yeah. And oh, yeah. the move of God will be unstoppable. I sense that. Oh, I, it's going to flip for good. Yeah. They're, they're going to flip mm-hmm. the communication uh, on all of these platforms. They're going to flip it for good. God knows how to turn that. And uh, I, I live through it mm-hmm. in the charismatic renewal of the Jesus movement. I lived through it. And it was all young people uh, on fire for, for God. The thing that's, uh, I believe, different this time is that one was stewarded by pastors. And they wanted to pastors do what pastors do. They built the corral around everybody. You know, uh, everybody stay in your sheepfold. Uh, this one's going to be stewarded by apostles and prophets, and we're going to say go. Mm. Go into all the world. Yeah. You know, come in here, get fed, get fired up if you want to, but go. Go. Uh, we're, we're going to do this one different, and we're not going to try to uh, hoard hoard the congregation. We're going to try, we're going to send the troops into the world and uh, we're going to change things. Yeah. So I, this is historic and I, I did live through it. It was phenomenal. This one's bigger than that. I mean, I know some people say it's like the Jesus movement on steroids. Well, yeah. why not? That would be historic. Yeah. Can't God do something bigger than he ever has before? Doesn't he say, I'm going to take it from glory to glory? Yeah. Why can't we believe that? So I'm believing more glory, greater glory, 2024. Amen. Amen. And again, the book is Come Home. It is available. That's going to be a powerful resource to really help you or anybody anybody that you know pray mm-hmm. effectively, confidently, powerfully yes. for those in your family, for your children, even spouses, anybody who's Mm -hmm. gone far away from the Lord. I do believe this is that time of prophetic words and decrees intersecting with their moment of fulfillment. And I totally agree, Apostle Tim. I I believe we are going to see, even in this next year, we are going to see something historic. I believe it. I believe it, Larry. I I believe it. I decree it. I (laughs) prophesy it. I know it. I know it in my knower. Like yeah, Kenneth Hagin used to say, <laughs> yep. I know it in my knower. I bet I do. So and, yeah. praise God for it. I mean, we've been praying for so long and uh, we'll pray and keep praying, but it's in its moment. It's it in is. its moment. And I, w- I will end with this just because yeah. this is something that the Lord has been highlighting to me. And it's a verse that I, I build on is, you know, you're talking about Joel 2, I think of Acts 2. And then I love Zechariah 10, verse 1, ask for rain in the time of the rain. And I know there's a lot we have yet to see, but the good news is we are seeing a lot even right now. This is not one day, someday, I hope so. We are no. seeing it and it's only increasing. And Apostle Tim, thank you because you provoke us to keep pressing in to the fullness of what God wants to do. So thank you, sir. Well, thank you, Larry. Love you. Bless you. Have a great uh, Christmas season and a supernatural 2024. Amen. 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 Thank you. Bless you.